assistant for the multi-organ transplantation program at the University Health Network in Toronto. I specifically work with the liver transplant team uh, and I, I, I've been working there since uh, October of 2018. So can you tell us a little bit about your background just before getting into PA school? So I, uh, I did my undergrad at Western University. There I worked with the campus paramedic uh, team, uh, the student emergency response team as an uh, emergency medical responder. Uh, from there, I got a job with the Canadian Coast Guard where I was working uh, up on Georgian Bay doing search and rescue. Uh, and then from there, uh, I got into the uh, UFTPA program and I was able to uh, complete it and get the job with UHA. And apart from working on the Coast Guard um, and your other activities, any extracurriculars that you were involved in? Uh, besides, so the, the student emergency response team ended up taking a lot of my time. I had a part-time job as well as a, as a hockey referee, which uh, was a very challenging job and it was also a lot of fun. It was good exercise. Um, and then working for the Coast Guard, uh, it really just, um, I guess, improved my ability as, as a responder. So when I came back to work with uh, the student emergency response team, I uh, had a lot, my clinical skills were a lot better for, for emergency response. Mm -hmm. And um, how did you decide to pursue PA? So I actually had never heard of the physician assistant uh, profession until I was talking with a great family friend of mine. Uh, so she's uh, an obstetrician in Oregon and she was telling me uh, about how if she could do it all over again, she'd want to be a physician assistant. So I, that kind of uh, lit the light bulb in my head and I, I decided to uh, kind of do some research on it. And to me, it seemed like the ideal profession where uh, you didn't have to commit so many years towards med school. You uh, could still, uh, uh, I guess, practice medicine and have that clinical environment um, and uh, really have that meaningful patient interaction. And it's a challenging profession that allows you to uh, really, uh, I guess, personalize yourself to what you want to do. Were you kind of contemplating any other careers at the time as well? So being a, a kinesiology student at Western, I think most kinesiology students think towards physiotherapy. So I guess when I initially started out with undergrad, that was the first thing I thought about. But then as an emergency medical responder uh, and working with the Coast Guard, I started to think kind of along the paramedic uh, and also joining the Army route. Uh, but then uh, when I came across a physician assistant, profession, it really, to me, stood out and it was something that I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And um, what was your process for applying to PA school? Like, which schools did you apply to and why? So I applied to all the Canadian programs and I was prepared to apply to the American programs if I, were, if I didn't get in. Um, the, the Manitoba program, uh, I don't know if they accept too many out-of-province uh, applicants. Um, and then the UFT program to me stood out first off because I'm from Toronto, and um, I, but I really liked uh, how they delivered their uh, their curriculum. So they they have the the I guess distance studies approach where you do a portion of your your experience uh, through online lectures, and then the, a lot of your clinical experience uh, you just do in the community. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed that part and. Toronto be, University of Toronto being one of the, the top universities in the world, uh, it seemed like a no-brainer. And what were some of your favorite rotations in second year? In second year, um, so I really, really enjoyed pediatrics. I had a phenomenal preceptor, um, and I think that really uh, made me uh, develop confidence as, as a clinician. Um, working in internal medicine, doing the, the ward medicine, I think uh, helped me establish an approach towards these complex patients. Uh, but I'd probably have to say my favorite uh, rotation would be uh, up into Thunder Bay. Uh, I, did, I did a placement in the intensive care unit there and that was um, pretty, uh, it was a pretty phenomenal experience. They have a world-class ICU up there and uh, it actually 
uh, helped me prepare for my position uh, with um, the multi-organ transplant program because a lot of the work I do is actually in the ICU. And in Thunder Bay, there is, uh, I de dealt with a lot of fulminant uh, liver failures, which helped me out with uh, working in liver transplantation, working with pre-liver transplant patients. So um, I, I owe a lot to the Thunder Bay ICU and, and that rotation. And um, how did you keep on top of um, your studies, I suppose, during that rotation? Like, how did you make sure you got the most out of that experience? I found, um, I think, one of the things that you, you do in, in these kind of clinical rotations is you try to read around everything. And uh, so when you're actually working, um, you're, uh, everything you encounter, you want to kind of read up, read up on so it, you can kind of have something to refer to. If, if you have a patient with an interesting uh, presentation, you read around that and it's something that you can refer to, um, I guess, uh, in the future. And then uh, after after the rotations, when you go home, I think it's great to also kind of have a balance. I think, uh, for instance, when I was in Thunder Bay, I uh, just try to explore the the nature around there, um, but also set up set aside some time to uh, prepare for the rotations, so um, you know what to encounter and you know um, how to be ready for certain procedures and uh, what you need to do. So you're originally from Toronto, living in the city, etc. And I think for some students, it's a little bit intimidating to think about this idea of work, um, doing the north-south swap for um, for PA consortium. So what was that like, uh, having to move every few weeks, or even just preparing yourself to go to somewhere remote? I think that was, to, for me, that was actually one of the biggest draws to the program. So I found that uh, the North swap positions or the North swap rotations gave me the most clinical experience. Uh, for instance, in the ICU, um, I it was me, the resident, uh, at nights we would essentially uh, run the, the ICU. Um, and uh, But then like if we were, for, uh, we would uh, be first assist in the OR when I was working in Sudbury, I was doing psychiatry up at Thunder Bay. Uh, so you. To, to be in these different environments where they first off don't have a lot of healthcare providers, um, it provides a lot of opportunity for students. Whereas somewhere, um, I guess in Southern Ontario, like Toronto, um, it's hard to get those opportunities because there's just so many, many students and so many learners around. Uh, so I found the Northern rotations were just excellent. Fantastic. And um, you're also a uh, brand new PA grad. Um, what was that experience like going through the job hunt and studying for this third exam at the same time? So I actually, I was lucky. I ended up getting the job uh, before the actual career start grant came out. Um, but uh, I was pretty involved in discussions with a lot of my classmates when the actual uh, PA career start grant came out. Uh, and. Um, there was so there was about fifty to uh, fifty five to sixty jobs that came out, um, and I I don't regret accept, accepting the job before it came out because I'm really satisfied with my position, um, but from uh, my understanding there were almost uh, too many jobs for the amount of uh, uh, PA graduates that were uh, that gra had graduated that year. And uh, the PA students really had, had their choosing for, for what they wanted to do. For those that don't know, what is transplant medicine? So in transplant, there's the medical side and then there's the surgical side. Um, so the medical side, specifically, I, I work with uh, liver transplant mainly during the days. And uh, so we manage uh, all of the patients before their transplant. Uh, and then after their transplant, and then even further after their transplant, when they come back for any complications that we think could be related to their immunosuppression or their transplant. Um, it's, the, the medicine is, um, is very complex just due to the fact that the, a lot of these patients are immunosuppressed and uh, have previously had uh, end organ failure. So, uh, there's a lot of complications that can arise with that. Um, so working parts of these interdisciplinary teams, uh, it's, it's really phenomenal to see 
um, how everyone comes together to manage these complex patients. And it's and every day I learn so much just about uh, about different presentations and some there's always some um, rare presentations that uh, will appear and then you can get a read up on it. So it's, it's really exciting to uh, be a part of. Yeah, so the, the multi-organ transplantation program, it's actually, it's more than that. It's there, there's, there's the heart, the lungs, the liver, the kidneys, there's the kidney pancreas transplants, and then there's a small bowel. So there's, a, there's about six, but two of them aren't as common. Um, so uh, with my position, um, I will work with the liver transplant team for two weeks, and then I'll be working call and weekends, uh, covering all of the organ groups. Um, so it, because of that, we have to have uh, a thorough or a, a large understanding of how to manage patients from any of these organ groups, um, be it in an emergency setting where uh, patients are um, starting to not look very good or, um, or just for certain things like managing blood sugars, managing blood pressures, things like that. Mm -hmm. And what's, um, what kind of care are patients receiving in the transplant service from the time that they arrive to the time that they're discharged? So with liver transplant, from the time they arrive, typically they're what we call pre-livers. So they're individuals that, uh, where they're, that either have acute or chronic liver failure. So we start the work process where um, we essentially um, evaluate them as candidates for liver transplant. Um, and then once they've been approved for liver transplant by the board that discusses them as candidates for liver transplants, then they uh, stay until an organ becomes available, either by deceased donor or by uh, live donor. And then uh, the surgical team, um, when one becomes available, will offer the organ to that individual. And, um, and then, so then we start the process of ordering all the medications for them before transplant. They have to be on very high dose steroids. And then after the transplant, um, we manage their immunosuppression in the ICU. And then when they come to us, then we manage them entirely as the patients. Okay, and when do they usually leave? It's, uh, it it um, depends on the patient um, and, and also uh, the condition they were in beforehand. Um, for someone who walks into the hospital and has had more chronic liver failure um, and is younger and healthier, they can be out of the hospital in, in uh, I guess, a bit less than two weeks. But for individuals that, uh, for instance, in liver failure, they... Um, they have hepatorenal syndrome, so they also have problems with their kidneys. They have their immunosuppressed, so they have problems with infections. Uh, it, that can complicate their stay, and um, I mean they can they can stay in hospital for months. Um, so there is kind of this this range, uh, and it, it, it's really specific to the patient, uh, I guess, case. Mm -hmm. And um, you did mention uh, hepatorenal failure. Yeah. Um, what are some other common conditions or complications that you come across that your team has to manage? Uh, so HRS, hepatorenal syndrome, is going to be something that's very common. Um, and then all, mainly uh, there's a lot of in infectious uh, processes that happen in, in uh, transplant. We have uh, an infectious disease transplant service that we um, consult routinely. Um, but because of the immunosuppression that every patient, um, aside from pre-livers, are going to be on, that predisposes them to some pretty serious infections. So we have to be very, very prudent with our approach to them. Uh, we see a lot of uh, diabetic problems as well, just mainly due to the steroids. Um, and also um, some of the immunosuppression medications can throw uh, patient's sugars out of whack. So. Those are kind of the main things we see, but there's always random other things we see. Um, and how, how long have you been working for this service now? So I started working with liver transplant, uh, I guess, at the start of November. Mm -hmm. um, before that, I had about a month of or six weeks of orientation with all of the different organ groups. Um, and I work with liver transplant uh, with their inpatient service uh, for two weeks every two weeks. So every two uh, other two weeks I'm doing uh, night and weekend calls. And what did that orientation look like? 
So we start, I started off and I spent a week with uh, each organ group. So I did kidney first um, and I, I really uh, spent a lot of time just trying to figure out uh, how each, uh, I guess, service works and just the logistics behind it because that's one of the, you'd be surprised, I'd be, well, that's one of the most, um, I guess, difficult things to figure out, just how uh, they, do, they do their, their medicine. Um, but then, and then there's also the medical side of things that you need to figure out for every um, every group. And then from kidney, I did I went to lung transplant, and at UHM, the lung transplant team is uh, one of the world leaders. So that was pretty special to be a part of and, and see kind of the transformation that they are able to achieve with lung transplant, um, and then heart transplant after. There's not as many heart transplant patients, but um, it was still. Um, very, very interesting, and I worked with uh, some very, very smart uh, people, and then uh, then also liver transplant, and I spent a lot of time with liver transplant just because that was going to be the team that I was going to be with, and um, I mean, I, I learned a lot in, the, in that orientation week, but even uh, to this day, I'm learning, learning more just not only about the medicine around it, but also the logistics and kind of how... Uh, how things kind of work in the in the realm of liver transplant. What does a typical week look like for you, Monday to Friday, or weekends, for example? So the way my schedule works is uh, I'll it's a four week rotation where I do two weeks with liver transplant, and that's working ten to six, and then um, and then I get the weekends off. Um, but then I do uh, the nights and weekend calls where I do Monday, Tuesday from seven to seven, I work the weekend from two to midnight and then uh, the next Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, ten to, or seven to seven uh, and then I restart the, the two weeks with liver. Um, so to me I actually really do appreciate the, the rotation because uh, it's, it kind of changes things up and I, I see uh, for instance with the room when I'm on, on call with uh, for, for MOT I'll get to see um, patients from all of the organ groups um, as well, that's where I guess some of the more exciting medicine comes. Um, uh, I guess code blues will happen. Um, more kind of serious uh, events will happen at night. They always happen at night for some reason. Um, and then, but then getting back to the to the liver team, I, it's it's nice to kind of be part of a team working. Um, we have uh, three nurse practitioners on our team that have been super helpful with me kind of entering the team. Um, and then we have uh, fellows and then our staff physician every week. Mm -hmm. And um, do you, uh, can you break down what a typical day looks like for you from when you get in to when you leave? So I get there, um, so the liver transplant team gets uh, to the hospital at around 7 a.m. and they do their rounds on all the patients at 7. Um, they finish their rounds by the time I get there at 10 and they, as, uh, we meet as a team and uh, they basically give a quick run through as to what happened overnight, if there are any changes. And from there, as a team, we, we, we essentially map out our day, what we need to do for our patients. From there, um, we round on our patients. And I, so I typically will have uh, eight to 10 inpatient liver transplant patients um, on my roster that I'll, um, I'll manage. And then we'll meet uh, back up at three. And then at three, uh, we'll do our, a whole, our whole team round again. And then uh, from there, we'll, uh, then we'll uh, just kind of clean up anything we need to do uh, before I go home at 10, or before I go home at 6. And what is um, the weeks that you're on the uh, MOT when it's 7 to 7? What does a typical or crazy night look like for you? So um, I get there, it's, I'll get there a bit early um, and kind of just uh, review the patients that we have in the acute care units um, because those are the patients that are typically uh, going to be more active over, overnight. Uh, they're on continuous monitoring and uh, they, they are on in the acute year, uh, care unit because uh, they do um, have, uh, I guess, a bit more of a concern with their stability. Uh, so I, I'll, quit, I'll round on those patients first and just make sure I'm familiar with them uh, in case anything does come up. Um, and then I'll kind of round on every floor. We tip, we, right now we have about four floors that um, have patients on them. So I'll just go check in with the nurses, make sure everything is all right. Um, and then uh, at this time I'm carrying a pager. So by then the pager is going off and I'm... Um, 
I guess, uh, get a change, I guess managing blood sugars, managing um, high, uh, high blood pressures, low blood pressures, um, ordering different medications, going to assess patients. It's every every shift. It's it's always something new. So it's uh, it's always kind of exciting and it keeps you on your toes. Absolutely. <clears throat> And um, you mentioned that there's a lot of inpatient ward management and you're doing call. Are there any times that you do consults or an outpatient clinic or does that fall uh, outside of the transplant service? So we'll do consults, um, for instance, um, if there's, say, a kidney transplant patient that um, all of a sudden um, kind of needs assessment for a liver transplant, so we'll kind of do consults in that regard as well as if uh, any pa any transplant patient comes to uh, the emergency at TGH, uh, they'll give us a call and um, we'll completely assess them in emergency. Um, so um, you, at nights, um, typically the fellow will be down in emergency to do it, taking the new consults, um, but if I'm having a quiet night, they'll generally send me a message and ask me to get down there to give them some help because typically we have a lot of patients coming in through the ER. Um, but in the, we don't. I don't really work in the outpatient setting. No, mainly inpatient stuff. Okay. And um, what do you enjoy about transplant medicine? Well, to, for me, the the most amazing thing is really the transformation that you see in these patients, specifically in liver transplant. We have these patients that will come into hospital and they really don't look that great. They have uh, they're bleeding. They're swollen. They're jaundiced, uh, their stomachs are distended, and uh, if we're able to get them a liver transplant, all of these things change, and they all of a sudden, you get to see, I guess, um, this amazing transformation. So it's, it's pretty amazing to witness this, uh, this change and also help facilitate it. So uh, that's, one of, that's been one of the greatest things about being in transplant, and then also to work at UHN um, and seeing all of the work they're doing and all the research that they're coming out with is, uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate for that. Mm -hmm. And how's your interaction with patients and their families? Uh, always, it's always been great. Um, I mean, a lot of these patients are very, um, are very thankful for a lot of the care they get, uh, and um, I've, I've only had good patient interactions so far. Mm -hmm. And what are some challenges about transplant medicine that you come across? These patients are, are quite complex, so I think for me, just as uh, a, a recent graduate and just starting out, uh, the, I guess, the, with the job, um, the biggest, I guess, challenge I've had is really making sure I'm, pro I'm managing the patient as a whole. Um, so uh, making sure I'm not missing anything on patients and uh, just being overly prudent and um, thoroughly man managing these complex patients. Um, so really just developing a kind of stepwise approach um, to make sure I'm kind of covering all my, ba my bases for these patients is kind of being the, the challenge, but I think right now I'm starting to get a lot more comfortable and uh, more confident. How many months have you been working so far? So I started uh, October 2018, and it's the start of February now, so about uh, four months, five okay. months. Incredible. Yeah. And uh, what's the PAMD relationship, or how often are you seeing the physicians on the service? So I will see the physician at 10 a.m. when I start on the, with liver transplant. That will be the staff physician. Um, but typically, the physician I work with uh, most often is a, a fellow on the service, and the fellow... Um, and I will, um, we, I mean, we'll, we're always in contact and um, whether it be um, like they, they, they'll contact me if we need to do a paracentesis and right, right now they're kind of, uh, um, I'm in the process of, uh, I guess, establishing uh, medical directives to just do paracentesis um, and then other things. Um, so I mean, the relationship is... Uh, I, I, I'm able to spend a lot of time kind of working on my own, which is nice, getting, the, getting that autonomy, but uh, then also working um, closely with, with the fellow, fellow uh, physicians. Um, they come from around the world and they have a lot to teach, so it's, it's been awesome. So how do you interact with nurses and allied health on the floor? Uh, like what kind of questions can they expect you to be able to answer about patients or about transplant medicine? 
Um, so when I'm working with the liver transplant team, we do have the three nurse practitioners. So uh, we work together as a team. We all have our patient rosters, and they've been uh, nothing but helpful for, for me, kind of, uh, kind of showing me the ropes uh, in liver transplant. Um, on the floors, the, the nurses uh, will page me if, if they have any concerns about their patients and I can come and assess them or um, if it's just kind of uh, um, nothing too big, I'll just kind of uh, give them a hand. Um, and then uh, for a lot of these patients, um, because these surgeries are so significant, I'm working with uh, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech language, language pathology, uh, just to ensure that this, these patients are, are uh, completely managed um, from all aspects of patient care. When is it appropriate to refer a patient back to transplant or to refer them to transplant medicine in the first place? So for, for individuals where their, their livers uh, aren't, um, are, are looking like they're not going to get better, uh, typically we'll, we'll get the referrals and we do have the, the pre-liver assessment cl clinics where um, this, this, uh, some staff physicians uh, and fellows will assess them. Uh, from there, um, uh, they, they can, or, or they can just be admitted uh, to liver transplant as pre-livers for assessment. Um, and then um, afterwards, once they've been um, transplanted, uh, anytime they come to Toronto General, they, they'll be admitted with us, regardless of, of uh, what it is. Uh, so they can come for a heart-related problem, uh, but because we're on liver transplant, they'll stay with liver transplant and then cardiology will just follow them. Um, so we see a lot, of, that's why we see such a range of patients, because some of these patients are so far out from their, their liver transplants. So it's, uh, it's you get to see a lot of, of different things. Mm -hmm. And um, why do you think the transplant service wanted to add a PA or have a PA on their service? Or do you so I was the fourth PA they added. Um, so I think with the first uh, three PAs, they really saw the benefits of PAs and, and kind of uh, how they're able to work uh, on an inpatient service. Um, and they're able to roster their own patients um, and work closely with uh, their their supervising physician to ensure that these patients are getting the best care they can, they, uh, they can get. Um, and uh, so just, with uh, the multi-organ transplantation uh, group, uh, because it's growing so quickly, and we're doing more and more transplants, um, that just means we're getting more patients, and um, that's exactly where PAs uh, fit in. Is um, we're helped, we're able to help reduce the the patient load for um, some of the some of the physicians on the service, and um, it, it works out great. Okay. And what advice would you have for someone that, uh, for a PA student that's interested in potentially getting into transplant medicine but can't necessarily secure a rotation in it? I think the best thing to do would be, um, I think the ICU rotation I had was, was um, instrumental in kind of just providing the, the groundwork for me to um, kind of build knowledge on um, in complex medicine. Um, so I think the ICU rotation was, um, I'd recommend doing an ICU rotation if you want to get into transplant. Uh, having an understanding of managing um, general surgery uh, ward patients is also important and I was fortunate to have uh, a great preceptor up in Sudbury as well for, um, for that and really, um, really just uh, developing an understanding on um, how to approach uh, inpatient, uh, inpatients. I think is the most important. So as long as you do uh, do a lot of your studying during those rotations, I think uh, that'll set you up. Anything that was like a holy grail for you in terms of books, resources? Um, Toronto books? Notes was really helpful and uh, I, I relied a lot on up to date when I was uh, a student. Um, just like I said, when I was reading around cases, um, up to date goes so far in depth and. In, almost provides you too much information, but um, it's, uh, it was very helpful, and it being on my phone, it was easy to access.